All right, on to the final part. That way he was laying in the bed. It was the same way he wakes up in one of the films. <sighs> Hello? Marty! You're awake! Good! Uh, uh, Emmett, uh, where are you? I'm down at the expo. I snuck out early to avoid my pop. If he knew I was about to make a publicly scientific spectacle of myself, he'd hit the room. Why didn't you wake me up? I tried to give you a nudge before I left, but you were practically comatose. How long has it been since you slept? Aside from being knocked unconscious, I'm not really sure. Anyway, I left you back at the lab to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah. Is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... I don't think dial tones existed back then. Um, apparently it could have. It was introduced in the 1920s.
Nevertheless, that sounds like a modern dull tone. And usually when you hang up on someone, it doesn't end in a dial tone. It just ends in silence. Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Jeez, Doc. Watch out. You almost ran... Did you notice off bump his head? Well, in the films, Marty bumped his head on the door for real. Because I had a mechanical problem with the DeLorean. Me over. Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. So, how are the time circuits? Still broken. I've got a few ideas, but I'm occupied with other problems today. So, is that what I'm destined to build for the Expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And, and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science! You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science, but if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the Expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dim just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Another path? What other path? I don't know. Architecture, automobile repair, taxidermy. Maybe I'll even pursue a life in law like my father always wanted. As long as Emmett steers clear of science, Edna and I will be free to be happy together. You can't want Emmett back with Edna. She used you to turn Hill Valley into a police state. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. But if I don't become a scientist, she'll never get the chance to vent her crazier ambitions. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure, Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! What the hell? Where'd it go? So this episode of the game. I think I've only played it once. Where is the previous episodes? I've played at least twice. So I'm probably going to muddle about trying to find the solution more here. Oh, come on. Here, little static thingy.
Also, it should be said that this is a completely made-for-game prop. Because anything that glows like this in real life is likely radioactive. Never mind the fact it's flying. I can't reach it. I can't reach it. Gotcha! <laughs> There's a shiny new tomorrow on the way. A day of invention is at hand. It's a mystic futuristic wonderland. Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two. If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true. There's a world of wonders wonder on display. The future is coming today. Not bad, eh? bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. The future is coming. It's getting clear now. Algae cakes taste so good you'd swear they was bad for you. It's kind of funner. Every time we've seen this guy, he's had no name. He's just Guy. But now, he's hostile, go. How about an algae cake? Sure thing, mister. Wait a minute, you're the guy that makes the algae cakes? What? I thought you couldn't stand them. Hey, you're the guy that tried to pick up on my Eunice. Oh, for the love of... No algae cakes for you, Buster.
The theremin was invented in 1920. Excuse me, Mr. Dito, Jacques Dito, at your service. Can I get a ride in that bathosphere? Certainement, if you've got a ticket. Jacques Dito, famous diver. So you're some kind of celebrity? I do not like to brag, but uh, I have a small following, yes. I guess people are always bugging you for autographs, huh? Asking you to tell them stories about your adventures and stuff. It gets a bit old, but I can always retreat to the depths. The fish are much less uh, uh, demanding. See you around. And Ocean Waver. Hello, Callahan. Found something got skipped today. What's going on here? Well, uh, Miss Strickland here seems to think, uh... You should step aside and let the officer do his duty. Now. Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. The electrokinetic levitator was Emmett's idea. I just helped. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Harry Callahan really is, and where he comes from. Is there something you want to tell me, Harry? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Shmirnov. Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist, a foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo. Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh... Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. But she's been getting some clout in town ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. Well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Uh... Where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. And it's gonna fly his electrokinetic levitator, and he's gonna do it today. Uh uh. I'm only giving this to Emmett. Yeah, sure, carry around the electronic accumulator around like it were a nuclear battery. Insert ticket to enter. I think that's supposed to be a clock. 
Enlightenment awaits you under the sea. Welcome to the phone booth of the future, made with Atlas Glass. Atlas, unbreakable and soundproof. Our phone is hands-free, so you can enjoy a sandwich or a cigarette while chatting with friends in perfect privacy. Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk... I don't know about you. But smoking in a tight, enclosed space would be kind of dangerous. Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls. Hi, Trixie. That's techni to you, kiddo. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know? Now, what can I do you for? So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the Glass House, the Future Furnishings, and, of course, Enlightenment Under the Sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself! Of course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. How much are tickets? Aw, oh, put your money away. Here. We're kind of like family now, you know? Thanks. The hell? Edna Strickland is trying to get Emmett's booth shut down. That dame don't know how to mind her own business, does she? Look, Emmett's demonstration has hit a snag or two. Can you delay his act for a while? Let someone else go before him? Sorry, I don't set the roster and they won't let me change it. Uh, I can drag my feet a little, but, uh, if your friend's not ready to go on pretty soon, we might have to skip his act. Uh, I mean, demonstration. But you can't. Hey, it's just a science demo. It ain't a matter of life and death. Artie told me how you managed to get your old job back. Uh, he did? But it was supposed to be a secret. There's no secrets between us. He couldn't resist telling such a good story. Yeah? Still, I'd like to hear it again, uh, from your point of view. Uh, he didn't tell you anything. Thanks. Happy to help. Are you ready for a picture radio? Wonder if that's anything like MTV. Potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tannen's speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. Don't walk off with the recording plant. It's the only one I got. Well, the electro pacifier. Amazing, isn't it? They say one day we'll be able to stun fleeing criminals by shocking them at a distance. Yay, you know what happened with tasers, though. They got used in an inappropriate way and are in fact just as lethal.
Does it work? Nah, it's just a model. Now can you please leave me alone to do my job? In a minute, I'm not quite through yet. plant doesn't belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. A fully equipped home entertainment center. So where's the ColecoVision? A Coleco unit is like 1983, I think. Coleco was originally the Connecticut Leather Company. Oh, just like how Tandy was originally a leather product company, Tay. I wonder why these leather companies got into computers. Was it the downward trend in the use of leather? In the house of the future, fresh fruit baskets will be replenished daily by fleets of fruit-bearing helicopters. Ah, uh, oh, it's wax. Amazon Prime was not yet a thing. In the house of the future, phone conversations will be completed in the privacy of the personal phone helmet. Hey! Please recite the phone number you wish to dial, or say, hang up, to terminate your phone helmet experience. Klondike 4385. Brown residence. Hey, Hampton. How's it hanging? This is Marty, Emmett's friend. Is he there? Not at the moment. I'm afraid he's off on one of his little adventures. Thanks. Bye. Farewell. Conversation terminated. Greetings again, mortals! This is Techni, Muse of Progress. Hoping you're all having a swell time taking in all the exhibits. Don't forget, you can purchase tickets to our main attraction right here at the information booth. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo.
Expo, where the future is coming today. This is Checky News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? This is Carl Sagan. Oh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Mr. Sagan, I didn't expect to hear from you again till after the expo. You didn't? Yes. Wasn't that part of our plan? Yes, our plan. About that plan. I'm a little unclear on the details of our plan. Unclear? But it's your plan. I mean, I I'm worried that you're a little unclear on the details. What details? All I'm supposed to do is use my pole with Detective Parker to get Emmett's demonstration canceled while you keep Emmett distracted. You are keeping him distracted, aren't you? Oh, yes. He's a very distractible young man. Oh, that's what I keep telling everyone. Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking, wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh. That was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come glumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away. And I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl? Is somebody with you? No! It's just you and me. Well, we should probably get back to the plan. Yes, we should. Goodbye, Mr. Sagan. Goodbye. Hang up. Conversation terminated. Well, that was probably done out of order. Obviously, we need to put the plant in there. Greetings, forward thinkers of Hill Valley. Okay, call me a snoop. Like four two five three. Hill Valley Expo, Techni speaking. Who's this? It's me, Carl. Oh, hi, Mr. Sagan. What can I do for you? Can you get Edna on the phone for me again? You got it, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Your Highness! Mr. Sagan, you really have to stop calling me like this. 
I've got to keep all of my attention on Detective Parker. Yes, yes, of course. I've just got a couple more questions. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women, flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking, rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Oh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. Next up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in pond scum. Welcome, Ernest Philpot! Thanks, Trixie, uh, uh, Technique. I I'm truly honored to be here today among all you pointy-headed types here. Like the lady said, I labor in the field of pawn stock. How do you ladies the and gentlemen is a mysterious and little-known biological... Chinese checkers and everything. ...diligent study and countless hours of experimentation, I believe I have unlocked the secrets of this noble vegetable. And I am here to present my discoveries to a disbelieving world. Algae cakes, ladies and gentlemen, is the next wave in the agricultural revolution of the 20th century. Algae is just loaded with healthful properties. You no, know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. I think a lot of people are going to be interested in that answer. benefit of all this nutrition on account of the less than appetizing nature of the algae herself. But sweetened with corn syrup and held together in solid water. That's casual. He's coming back. The algae cake presents a package that is truly... Hey, Danny, do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying flavor. to protect the expo from the likes of you. This will only take a minute. By my booth. That's booth A113. Our plant Here's recorder. It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. <laughs> Listen. You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. D Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for that. Hey, does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? Let's take that as a yes. Emmett's gotta be around here somewhere. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very... interesting. Huh. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon! Mr. Duto? Oui. Here's my ticket. Give me a ride in that thing. Thank you, monsieur. I hope you will find your trip to the bottom of the sea less delightful. Monsieur has a way with words. Hey, Artie, what do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure. 
But I was wondering... Is there any way you can delay Emmett's demo? He ran into some last-minute turbulence. Emmett's already pushed his luck by substituting this electrokinetic whatsis for the mental alignment meter he was supposed to be showing. I can't alter his place on the roster, too. The board would get the idea I was showing favoritism. See you around. Okay, what's that's up here? Hmm. No one in here. Emmett's gonna fly his electrokinetic levitator, and he's gonna do it today. Hey, Artie. Have you seen Emmett? He isn't at his booth. Odd. Well, he hasn't left the hall. I would have seen him. I'm sure he's around here somewhere. See you around. So if I recall, he's in one of the exhibits. in here. Nah, once was enough for me. Those look like the controls to raise and lower the whatchamacallit. Those look like the controls to raise and lower the whatchamacallit. Mr. Duto? Oui? 
I'm looking for a friend of mine, Emmett Brown. Tall young guy, reddish brown hair. A uh, distracted look. That's him. Any idea where he went? He just passed by here with an older gentleman. I think they were headed into the house of black. Great, thanks. Those look like the controls to raise and lower the whatchamacallit. Hey, Emmett, come out of there. Don't listen to him. Perfect. What's funny about this is that glass towers really did take off in the 80s. In Vancouver, like every tower built downtown has been a Vancouver special. with all the towers required to have a specific color of glass. Okay, Emmett, let's get you out of here. Emmett! Emmett, don't listen to him. He, he's crazy. I'm still not sure about this business proposal, Mr. Sagan. Let me explain it again. Atlas glass. Unbreakable and soundproof. Soundproof glass. Great. Our living space can be configured to meet the needs of any family. Need a private study? Simply slide the walls in, or slide them out again to create a spacious banquet hall.
damn it. Where did you take him now, Doc? The next exhibitor on our list is Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. Officer Parker is going to demonstrate an element has truly met his match today. Officer Parker? Uh, it seems our next exhibitor is unavoidably detained, but I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for a tall, thin, older gentleman. He might have been with a tall, thin, younger gentleman. I know just who you're talking about. Hey, just left about a minute ago. If you hurry, you might catch that. Take off your helmet. I prefer to leave it on. The inland air is difficult on my sinuses. Hmm. I know you're in there, Doc. Doc? Yes, I am a doctor of marine biology, but I fail to understand what you're... Quit fooling around, Doc. What have you done with Stop! Emma? Stop! Help! I'm being attacked! Harry! What are you doing? You can't assault the exhibitors. You don't understand. He's kidnapped Emmett. The boys obviously are confusing. I'll say he is. But one I should toss him out on his ear. That won't be necessary. Do you know who that is? That's Jock Duteau of the Oceanic Institute. No, it's not. It's... Please, keep it down. The expo went through a lot of trouble and expense to secure Professor Duteau. We can't afford to antagonize him. But if you've got a complaint against him, we can straighten it out after the show. But if you make another scene like that, I'm afraid I'm going to have you expelled from the hall. Where did you stash Emmett? In the diving bell? It's called a bathosphere. Aha! So Emmett is in the bathosphere. I don't know what you're talking about. We're not gonna get away with this, you know. As they say in my country, que sera, sera. Mm -hmm. I ought to just go raise the bathosphere myself. I don't think so. Punk giving you trouble, Mr. Duto? Mm. Here's my ticket. I want to see inside that bathosphere. I don't think so. What do you mean? I've got a ticket. You have to honor my ticket. It's uh, uh, the, the, the wrong kind of ticket. Sorry. Oh, give me a break. I'm only giving this to Emmett. Hey, Artie. This ticket should get me into any exhibit on the floor, right? Sure. That's a P ticket. Well, the guy at the aquarium is refusing to honor it. Hmm, there must be some mistake. Come on, let's straighten this out. Professor Duteau, this young man claims you refused to take his ticket. Not at all. I'm only too happy to take his ticket. Please, climb the ladder, and I will raise the bathroom's fee. I cannot raise the bathosphere at this moment. What a shame. Yes, it is, it is, it is. Well, I will work on the problem. Perhaps if you come back later. Come down, please. The bathosphere. 
Step back! You're gripping the hose! What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? It's very bad form. Oh, sorry. Hiya, folks. It's me, Techni, Muse of Progress, gracing you once again with my presence. And speaking of presents, what better gift could Hill Valley offer the world than this magnificent science and technology exhibit? Hey, folks? If you haven't done so already, I urge each and every one of you to take a peek at Furnishings of the Future. Right here in our main hall. Tickets are available from me, Techni, at our information desk. It's an old model for superstition. A crimp horse needs imminent doom. It does if there's somebody inside the bathosphere, but I thought you said there wasn't anybody in the bathosphere. There's not. Hey! I'm just gonna keep holding this air tube closed until you raise the bathosphere. I wish you would. Why not? There's nobody in the bathosphere, right? You ready to drop the act now, Jacques Duteau, a.k.a. Carl Sagan, a.k.a.? No! Emmett gets nowhere until you raise the bathosphere. Uh, Emmett? Who? Emmett, you. You know what happens when the air runs out, to both of you. I command you, uncrimp that hose! Funny, you'd think it was you who was running out of air, not the guy in the bathosphere. I... I don't know who, what you're talking about. It's as if you two were connected somehow. Step off the holes. Raise the bathosphere, Doc. I won't do it. Then neither will I. Just a malfunction after all. Let's get you out of there. Huh? Emmett Brown? Then it was true. Hey, you. Hey, he just took that guy's wallet. I think he took his wallet. Oh. Remind me not to become an oceanographer. I guess I must have a touch of claustrophobia. Never should have gone in there. Well, we've all got problems. Now, you'd better get back to your booth Funny before thing is, I don't even remember going in there. Last thing I recall, I was in the glass house talking to Carl Sagan. Did you know he's really a scientist? I'd heard. What did he say to you? Oh, he had some sort of spur-of-the-moment business proposition. It was all very rush-rush. I never got the details. It would have meant leaving before the expo was over, so I told him that... Say, where did he go? Do you know? Carl Sagan? He had to leave. One of his experiments blew up on him. No, I know how that is. Greetings and salutations to all our honored guests. I am Techni, Muse of Progress. And it is my pleasant task once again to highlight one of the great minds who was hard at work building a better tomorrow. I think that's me. I'm next on the roster. But are you ready? No, I don't have a choice. Did you bring the static accumulator? Oh, right. Here you go. Great. Come on, let's get up there. It's been hard at work dreaming up gizmos and banging them together in his garage. And who knows? One of this kid's gizmos just might take off and change the life of everybody in town. Could it be the very thing he's brought to share with us today? It wouldn't be the first time the world was changed by a kid. That ought to do it. Are the block bearings all in the raised position? Block bearings, block bearings. Raised position, check. Then it looks like all systems are go. Wish me luck. Don't have to. 
ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emmett Brown! Objection! <gasps> Objection, Your Honor! I hereby demand that the scientific demonstration of one Emmett Lethra Brown be terminated and forfeit by reason of insanity! I declare him to be in contempt of me, his father! Where is he? Hand him over this instant! Emmett, are you up there? Emmett, Shh. don't give me away! Just jump in the levitator and go. What's he gonna do? Shoot me down with an anti-aircraft gun? I thought you weren't scared of your father anymore. When he's in a mood like this, I'd have to be suicidal not to be scared. Come on, Emmett, you can't miss your big moment. You don't look very dignified crouching down there, you know. Better undignified than dead. Let me talk to him. You can't hide from justice! <clears throat> You don't think you can shelter him? Maybe Emmett would come out from wherever it is he's hiding if you tried the reasonable approach. This is the reasonable approach. Don't antagonize him. Well, if you're not going to say anything. So he is up there with you. Thanks a lot. Son, I order you to come down from there this second. Fear! I want to speak to my son! Emmett's not ready to talk to you, uh, directly. Oh, God. I suppose you're his mouthpiece? I guess so, yeah. If I can say so, sir, the problem is, is you're coming on too strong. You intimidate him. I don't intimidate him enough. That's the problem. You can't talk him out of it. His mind is made up. So, if talking won't work, there's always threshing. Can't you two have it out later? You mean after he's gone through with this ridiculous stunt? Yeah. No! Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. You here to disobey Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. So, what's your plan? I just stand here like this indefinitely. After a few centuries, the process of petrification will set in, and that'll be that. Okay, that is a plan. Maybe he'll give you a fair chance to explain yourself. He is a judge, after all. Yes, a judge who's already passed sentence. He won't listen to me. He never has. I'll be right back. I'm counting to four and... I... Try! So... Is your client prepared to make a statement? He says it's no use talking to you. Y you never listen? That only shows how pig-headed he is. Of course I listen. If he can justify his craziness, I'll be only too happy to indulge it. Stay right there. Emmett. I'm not talking to him. There's no point. You heard him. He said he'll listen to you. Well... At least give it a shot. Father? Son? You've never understood the first thing about me. All you want to do is step on me, squelch my natural instincts. You don't know what it's like what to be young. You, you don't know what it's You're like to have dreams. You have ambitions so great and so powerful that they've got a life of their own. You. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life while they fell apart where they must. This is America, Pop. And in America, a person doesn't have to do what his father did. Isn't that why you came to America? To live where there wouldn't be so many rules? Well, we talked. Are you happy? Emmett? Care to play peacemaker again, Pollyanna? Deep down, he's just worried about you hurting yourself. No amount of physical pain could equal the pain he's already inflicted to my spirit. 
Okay, so he's got a strong personality. Strong personality? Lord save us from strong fathers. Why couldn't I have been born to a nice, wimpy milk toast? You know. These lines don't seem like they are coming from the characters, but from probably the script writer. Like there's nothing in the films to even suggest what Doc Brown's father was like. Yeah, well, that's no picnic either. The important thing is, Fathers can change. Says you. I don't know. I think you two are on the verge of a breakthrough. Ugh. Please, you gotta get out of Emmett's way. I have yet to hear a compelling or even coherent reason why. See, Your Honor, it's just that this demo is so important to Emmett. A childish kerfuffle. He'll forget all about it in two weeks' time. That's what I'm afraid of. Emmett's just... Stubborn, willful, single-minded, incorrigible, and obsessed. That may be your angle, Sonny, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. Make no mistake. Those are traits that lead to trouble. He gets them from his mother. Look, Your Honor, you don't see it, but there's an awful lot riding on Emmett's demonstration. All the more reason why I've got to put a stop to it. Look me in the eyes, young man. I expect you know my son pretty well by now. Do you seriously think his exhibition is going to be a success? Sure. Uh, sure it will. Ha! You know as well as I how it'll end. Disaster! Maybe, and maybe not, but even if it does, I mean, isn't Emmett entitled to make a few mistakes? Emmett has exceeded his quota for one lifetime. It's my job as his father to see to it. There are no more mistakes. Emmett's just trying to make a name for himself. Maybe things were different when you were a kid, but nowadays you, you gotta take chances. What do you know about taking chances? Try moving to a strange country where you don't speak the language with only two dollars to your name. You? You bet your socks, me! And I made out all right, too. How'd your dad feel about it at the time? Papa? He was fit to be tied. He called me a disobedient little... So your father didn't approve of you coming to America? Well, Papa never really understood the younger generation. He came around a bit in the end, but by then it was too late to... Tell him I'll listen to him. I want to listen to him. If he wants to talk. Emmett? He says you get your stubbornness from your mother. Well, that's the limit. If he's not satisfied with insulting me, he's got to drag my mother through the dirt, too. Mother isn't at all like me. She's gentle and sweet and endlessly patient. If anything, I'm more like... Oh, skip it. You were starting to say that you're like... Skip it. Can it be the you and your dad? No, next subject. Emmett, stop being a dope. You've got your pride, okay, I, I get it. And so does he, but what's the harm in trying to make peace with the guy? He's your family, and family's important. Sometimes it's, well, even more important than we realize. May I come up? So, you think my new invention is a disaster waiting to happen? Yes, yes I do. And I'm here to say, if any son of mine is going to make of himself a public disaster, I insist on being there to support him. Pop! You're gonna change your tune once you see this baby go airborne. 
to see the force field generated by the static accumulator. Marty, give Trixie the signal. We're ready for liftoff. Vicky, I wonder what the future ramifications of this oh, is. Oh, good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us through that unavoidable delay. And now the Hill Valley Expo is pleased as punch to present Mr. Emmett Brown and his electrokinetic levitator. Okay. I thought I could change her. Things could be different. Forget about it. Come on. We gotta find a way to stop her before. No, don't come any closer. Doc. Go away. But... Move. Move. Party. Oh my god, Doc! Say something. Chromium, lithium, potassium, iridium, titanium, ruthenium. I'll get, I'll get help. Newspaper. What? You mean... I'm gonna get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. Yes. Oh, I think I am going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. So, in the film. We never actually see anyone fade out. However, in the there is a deleted scene. A future Biff coming back from 1955. And fading out as he falls out of the DeLorean. Ah, come back. Marty, have you been out here the whole time? Damn it. Um, is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. And if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh, what was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by However, the, how's the glass? of that size is 
to play havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. I wonder if we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force, one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight. Oh, great, Scott! That's it! What about your father? Oh, yes, I suppose I should wait for him to finish dealing with the officials. I can't say he was exactly thrilled with the unexpected turn my demonstration took. But you heard him in there. He understands that a life of science has its ups and downs. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry, is something wrong? It's a long story. Let's just say I, uh, I lost somebody. Oh, how sad. Anyone I know? It was, uh, Carl Sagan. What? The guy who tried to hire me in there? You were friends with him? Strange. But how? Don't worry about it. It's got nothing to do with you. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. Where you come from, what you're doing here. But there's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Uh, please, Emmett, don't ask What's any- What's this? Come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. Okay, here goes. What's that? An explanation. But you've got to promise me, don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Emmett! Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. Not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to uh, something. Just, just say you promise. Okay, I promise. Wait, I will see you again, right? I guarantee it. Though we're not done yet. Hey, it worked. So, you were the same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. Only way I could do it without messing up your timeline. Very clever, but what are you doing in 1931? came to rescue you. Teenage me? No, you, you. But then teenage you got mixed up in it. See, you were in jail and... Never mind, it's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. Me? Nah, no. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy of the McFly name. You seen my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can you believe it? Hitched? Married. I swear, that boy's gonna put his pop on an early grave. So that's how she got her job back. 
He he's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was great grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on me. Better reference to the third fill. Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of- that car! Oh, great. How the hell did she get back here? She? You? You're not Edna. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me, did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Well... Wait, Edna Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? If that's what you call it, it made a loud noise, and then wham! Nothing! Great Scott! Marty, do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys, you mind telling me what the hell you're... Uh-oh. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. So again with time travel questions. If Hill Valley just got wiped out. Then why is the DeLorean Doc and Marty still he? Hello, Kinamele. Yeah, the real Carl Sagan didn't die then. He wasn't even born yet. How? Something must have happened to it. A long time ago. Well, now you two look at my lost. Hey, what on earth is that thing? Oh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. We're looking for Hill Valley. Well, which is it, a hill or a valley? No, it's a town. It's a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley a town? Say, I, I think I once heard that there was a town here a long time ago. Don't know much about it, though. Just as I suspected. happened in Hill Valley? Oh, heck, I don't know. That was all before I was born. Then whatever it was, it must have happened at least 45 years ago. Nobody much cares to settle around here nowadays. My dad tried to buy a farm in this area years ago, but he got run off by Scary Mary. Scary Mary? Well, that's what we all call her. Lives a couple miles from here. 
I make a monthly drop at her place. She's a fiend for news. Takes all the papers in the county, never throws one away. Say, if there's anybody who can tell you what happened to Hill Valley, it's her. Can you direct us to her? It's imperative that we talk to her. Sorry, fellas, but I'm pretty sure she won't talk to you. Why wouldn't she talk to us? The thing of it is, guys, Mary's older than dirt, but she's also a little touched, if you catch my drift. She doesn't like strangers. I'm sure we can handle her. We'll be very polite. Please, we gotta see her. Well, okay, if you insist. Take a right turn just after the bridge, then follow the wheel ruts till they come to an end. You'll have to go the last quarter mile on foot. Good luck, and don't say I didn't warn you. I got a notion I'll be kicking myself for sending you up there. Can I drive? I do admit this last part of the game was an interesting twist. Because when I played it the first time, I thought it was going to end with the science fair. Mary Pickford. Step away from the cabin! <gasps> Pardon us for intruding, madam. We were wondering if you could tell us... I don't talk to hooligans! I'm a very friendly sort. That, that was Edna. Edna Strickland? Impossible. This is how she was when I first met her. I had to... Listen, just leave it to me. Okay, you think you know how to handle her. Just remember, we need to know what happened to Hill Valley, and just as importantly, the precise time when it happened. Mary Pickford. Now where would she pick up a fake name like that? I hate to see it like this. Needed to see at least one destroyed DeLorean. A blacksmith sign. I wonder if it's from Doc's old shop. can wait. I'm guessing this mop doesn't get much use. I wonder what's cooking. I guess this isn't the right time to be burning things. Ouch! Heen! Doc, 
It's a... I don't think so. Maybe not. An old saloon sign. Cool. Too bad it's all burnt. Edna's grandfather, Marshall Strickland. That's the same picture I saw in Edna's apartment, way back, in the future. Look! <laughs> Not sure what that'll do. sure what that'll do. So we have two signs and a mob. Mistrick, who are you? Uh, Yakov Shmirnov? That's a foolish name, and I make it a rule not to talk to strangers with foolish names. But we're not strangers. How do I know you? You tried to have me arrested once, a long time ago, remember? Listen, Sonny. I'm an easygoing woman, but I got a few rules I live by. And rule number one is, I never, ever talk about the past! Or the future, neither. I don't talk about any day but today. I guess that didn't go so well. Of course she doesn't talk about the past, because there's something in her past she's trying to forget. But we're gonna pry it out of her. Go ahead, knock on the door again. The document. The door. What? It's me again, your old friend. How do I know you? Knocking on the door. We spent the day together. We did? Where? At the expo. That's crazy. I've been here all... What day is it? Tuesday, October 13th, 1931. October 13th, 1931. October 13th. Something funny about that date. Well, what are you here for? I brought something for you. What is it? Let me see. The Collective Shrug. I 
I brought you him. Him? Who him? Him who? Look hard. Don't tell me you don't recognize your own boyfriend. My boyfriend? Yeah, he's, um, he's all grown up. Come closer, fella. Marty, what am I supposed to do? Trust me, Doc. Just go with it. It can't be! Emmett! Yes, Edna. It's me. It is! It's October 13th, 1931! Oh, and you are Emmett! <gasps> Emmett! Oh. How did I get so turned around? H have I been dreaming, or...? Well, stay there! It's a classic case of repressed memory syndrome. Once the mental dam is broken, the subject is immediately plunged into the midst of the very scenes she's trying to forget. You'll come back. Of course I knew you would. An intelligent boy like you wouldn't be one to throw away true love all because of a silly quarrel. I've already forgotten about last night's little tip. I trust you've done the same? Of course I have. Of course I have. What? Oh. Uh. Schnookums. Uh, uh, Schnookums. <laughs> you're sweet. But you're still keeping company with this Smirnoff character. I insist you drop him. He's a bad influence. And you've got to stop working on that dangerous electrokinetic... What's this? Um, okay. I suppose now you're miffed with me for forcing Detective Parker to close your booth down. Bitter medicine for you, I know, but I had to do it. And Parker had no choice but to obey my orders. He knows that my opinion carries a lot of weight in Hill Valley, and he'd never... Parker would never... Oh... What is it? I don't know. Something about Detective Parker. Something that happened to me on October 13th. What could it be? Can you jog her memory? If we can keep her mind in the past, we may get the full story of Hill Valley's premature destruction. Here's something that'll make you remember. Remember what? I don't like to remember. Who are you? What are you doing in my yard, you hooligan? No, Edna. No yarn. What? This is Emmett speaking. It's October 13th, 1931. Yes. And something's about to happen. Oh, yes, something big. But what? Better not talk to her directly. It'll break the spell. Sure what? Oh, come to think of it, 
How can I be expecting something unexpected? Uh, oh, what's going on? Quick, Marty. We've got to find a way to push the story along before she snaps out of her reverie. Heavens! Can it be? It is! Is what? Grandfather! Big as life! Marshal James Strickland came to Hill Valley in 1869, shot by... I know, Doc. We met him in 1885. Remember? No! I must be mistaken. Grandfather didn't look like that. That man is an imposter! I'm not even sure it is a man! This is all very confusing. Where am I? Why am I thinking about the past? Get off my lawn, you kids! We better find a way to bring back Marshal Strickland quick. We've got to bring this story to a climax. a bit like grandfather now but he would never have walked around bareheaded not sure what that'll do not sure what that'll do this hat doesn't frame her face very well Not bad. Oh, Grandfather, how well you look. How well everything looks. How does everything look? Tell me. It's a bit rustic, to be sure. But all the buildings are so sturdy and well kept. And the young people of Hill Valley, they're so virtuous and upright. So unlike the degenerate specimens from the 20th century. And I know the reason why. Why? why? They haven't yet fallen prey to the vices of booze and debauchery. They are still in a state of innocence. I think I could learn to like living here. <gasps> but who's this? Who? Ooh, this big lout swaggering up the street. Lips curled in an insolent sneer. He's a newcomer to Hill Valley. Uh, Beauregard. Beauregard... If you saw the third film, this makes more sense. Dannon. Yes! Good guess. Look at him. Acting like a big shot. Throwing his money around. Stolen money, no doubt. Why can't they see through him? The two-bit phony! And now his plan becomes clear. He's bought a plot of land in town. He's going to put up a... Uh, uh, a what? I don't know. It's something I don't like. Something evil. This is the key to our mystery. We've got to get her memory back in the groove. Maybe this will take you back. Back where? I don't want to go back. Stay in the moment, Edna. Please, Marty. Don't interrupt the trance. Not sure what that'll do. Not 
not sure what that'll do. Not sure what that'll do. Not sure what that'll do. Talk about a watering hole. A saloon? In Hill Valley? Oh, he can't do that! Grandpa, you can't let him do it! You can't let that snake ruin paradise! Well, if they're all too blind to stop him, I'll just have to take the law into my own hands. I'll make sure this sinful establishment never opens its doors. I'll... I don't know what I'll do, but I'll do something. Something very... conclusive. wrong it'll never burn like that first we'll need some kerosene apply it liberally to the building site no sense in being parsimonious and now watch this is beautiful the devil's handiwork consumed by the fires of righteousness <laughs> burn, you sucker! Burn! She was never this passionate when we were dating. Uh oh. What is it, Edna? Is it the fire? Turn away! Don't look! It's not staying in the saloon, is it? It's spreading to the other buildings in Hill Valley. My intentions were pure. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. But it did happen like this, and you've been repressing it all these years because you can't stand to admit that you're... A hooligan! I'm a hooligan! <laughs> Did I lay it on too thick? Incidentally. A lot of West Coast towns burned nearly to the ground in the early 1900s. Mostly because they built everything from wood and had no fire brigades at the time. Click up Great Fire and you'll find at least two or three from California, I'm sure. Not including the latest climate change induced wesses. Since those are different. The hit. That because wood is cheap. Basically, as far as construction goes. For the last 100 years, you were not permitted to build a wooden building higher than three stories.
This is because that's the tallest a ladder truck could be. They've since changed to five stories if the first story is concrete. But the combustible buildings were literally labeled as such on building plans. So it's not like they are building them without knowing they will go up in flames. Rather, sprinkler systems have to be installed to slow the rate of fire. Here's the story. Black and white and red all over. Huh. Hill Valley destroyed by fire. Started approximately 2 a.m. July 17th, 1876. Of course, I'm not the real criminal in this story. Am I, Mr. Sagan? You set me up for a fall. You and Schmernoff. You made me steal your infernal car. You made me burn down Hill Valley. And now, by the powers invested in me by the town of Hill Valley, I hereby sentence you two criminals to... Hey. You! How much have you heard? Enough for a month's worth of headlines in a Hayesville Herald. Two months worth if you shoot those fellas. I could shoot you too, you know. But you won't, because that would be against the law. And you never break the law, right? This is your cue to skedaddle. Right. Much obliged. There's Beauregard Tannen's half-finished saloon. Sometime during the next hour, Edna's going to light it on fire and accidentally burn down Hill Valley. Hey, wait a sec. That brick. Brick doesn't burn. It must be the insides. Wonder where her DeLorean is. We'll find it later. Right now, we've got to stop that fire. I'll go around back. You go through the front. Got it. I'm going to take a quick break. Be right back. <laughs> 